Hey everybody, it's me, Angela Walters. Welcome to my weekly live chat. I'm super excited to talk about quilting today with you. Um, as always, I have Jessica behind the scenes. So if you're watching live, you can type your questions in the comment section and I'll answer them at the end. If you're not watching this live, you can leave them in the comment section. And from time to time, I get on there and answer them. So if you watched the live chat two weeks ago, I kind of talked a little bit about how I plan out my quilting designs, kind of you know gave some ideas of things I think about and I use a specific quilt top as an example. And I said, oh, in the next two weeks, I'm gonna get it quilted and I'll show you what it actually looks like. Well, the good news is I finished half of it. So I'm gonna show you what the center looks like and kind of talk about how how do you recover when things don't always work out as, as it plans, as you plan? And then I also, before we get started though, wanna give you um, some updates on some upcoming events. So super excited. So a lot to cover today, very, very excited. First of all, if you have watched my live chat or been on my website, you probably have seen before that we're having a quilt walk, our sixth annual quilt walk. It's crazy to think it's been that many. It's our um, kind of big local event of the year. Like this thing takes up so much of our time, but it's such a fun thing. And it's June 8th this year, and Jenny Doan is our featured guest. And she's such a sweetie for coming. I mean, I may have begged and groveled, but we finally talked her into it. But right before I went live, we finally solidified all the details. So I get to tell you, you're the first that gets to hear about it. Um, so we wanted to make it kind of a bigger event, right? Not just that one day, but a lot of other things. So one exciting thing is we are starting a long arm education center here. We have a room that will soon be filled with long arms and dedicated to long arm classes. So I'm teaching some classes before and after quilt walk so that if you happen to make your way to the Kansas City area, um, you could t partake in that as well. So June 6th and 7th, I'll have two hands-on long arm classes. There's a link in the description box. You can click on that and it will take you to all the information. And then 8th, June 8th is the big day, the quilt walk day. And if you haven't heard about it before, basically what I do is invite you to come to this charming historical downtown, which our quilt shop is located. And then you get to wander around the square and look at quilts and collect the pieces of a quilt pattern I design especially for the the quilt walk so it's kind of like you get to get all the pieces and when you're done you have the pattern to make an exclusive pattern that I make for it it's a lot of fun we we'll have some exhibits I have Jenny Doan doing some stuff it's just a really you can see the cute little shops it's just a really fun fun day um, it's in June in Missouri so we're always praying that it's not hot but even if it is we have air conditioning and all that good stuff and then this is just a quick mock-up of what this year's quilt walk quilt will be so a little teaser here um, I'm almost done piecing it for this quilt, I was kind of thinking of flower inspired blocks. And then since Jenny Doan is the featured guest, you know, from Missouri Star Quilt Company, I thought a nice star block in the center would be perfect. So very, very excited about this. And of course, we'll have kits available too, if you wanna get that. Um, on Quilt Walk Day, Jenny Doan herself will be doing a trunk show. Super excited. This is the first time that we've did a bigger kind of thing like this within the Quilt Walk. And so, there's this beautiful event space that's just across the block from the quilt shop. And um, she'll be teach doing a little trunk show for us there in a meet and greet. Um, tickets are required. It's only $10 though, but you can find out all that, of course, by scanning the QR code or go to the link. Um, again, she's gonna have some quilts there. She's just as sweet as you would think she is. She's 100% just so great and nice. I love, sure, lo sure do love her. Um, again, I'll have a meet and greet. We'll have some other exhibits as well, other details there, but that's the big one. And then that night, I'm doing a dinner and trunk show at the same beautiful event space. We did this for the first time last year and it was a blast. Um, we gave away tons of great prizes. I mean, we, it's, kind of like Oprah's favorite things a little bit. Everybody gets something really cool, swag bags, a dinner catered in, and then I talk, do a trunk show and a meet and greet. Um, this year, I mean, if you came last year, my trunk show doesn't change a whole lot, but I'm gonna be kind of focusing solely on Tula's quilts, talking about, you know, what's it like working with her? How do I get started with that? How do I quilt a quilt that's supposed to be a spaceship in the center, right? You know, that kind of stuff. Um, but it'll be a fun time, great, great exam, uh, great time there. Now, I'm sure by this part of the event, I'm gonna be getting a little tired, but I'll rally because the next day we're doing a celebrating machine quilting event. I know it's a lot. It's kind of a lot to wrap my mind around now that I'm saying it all out loud. Um, but here at our event space, this is where I film, where we have our retreats. 
we're going to be having our long arm education center. And so we're going to have a day to come in. I'm going to demo on the long arms. You can try them out. I'm going to have quilts hanging up all around, snacks and giveaways, just a little bit more low key way. If you want to come by and say hi without coming to the dinner and drunk show, or if you just want to, I don't know, see me in action or see some beautiful quilts up close. And then we're going to finish off that that nice little week of events with two more long arm classes. So again, really, really excited about that. Um, it's June 8th. It's, I'm so excited to finally have all the details ready. And so you can check that out and, and sign up for them if you want. I know not everybody lives in the Kansas City area. I understand. But if you happen to find yourself in this area, June 8th, I hope you'll stop by. And I will say we're like 20 minutes from the airport and we're about 45 minutes from Missouri Star Quilt Company. I almost put that on the awning, but decided that'd be a little tacky. So anyway, um, you can find all the details about that on my website. But that's enough of that. Let's talk about this quilt. So this is the one that I was going to quilt for this, that I did quilt for this uh, live chat. It's not huge. It's only about this big, the circle is. Um, but in that last live chat, I kind of talked about what I was thinking. And this was kind of the game plan I went with. I was going to quilt this curvy, pointy shape um, and have these other shapes in between. But I also said, it's great to have a plan, but don't feel like you have to stick with it if it doesn't work out the way you think. So I loaded the quilt, got ready to go. We can see it here on my long arm. I actually loaded it sideways and it, for a very good reason. I knew that I'd be doing more of the ruler quilting on the sides and it's a lot easier for me to work with the ruler from the sides of the foot than behind it. So if I had put it this way, it would have been harder when I got to the bottom. If you don't know what I'm saying, then just pretend I didn't say anything at all. I loaded it sideways to make it easier. Um, and then I went to go get my Taj ruler, which is exactly what I would need to quilt that shape. And you can probably guess what happened. I realized that Taj was not at my quilting studio. It was here at my event space. So right off the bat, I didn't have the right <laughs> shape. So I know myself and I know that I cannot freehand that curvy pointy shape. I mean, I can do one side pretty good, but by the time I flip to the other, it looks crazy. So I, right off the bat, I had to like recalibrate and I decided to um, use a different curve shape. Once I got it loaded, I started with some of the pieces in the block um, just to kind of get warmed up. Uh, I did say in that last live chat that I like to do continuous curve, which you can see in the purple blocks here. I love it because I can start from one end and then end on the opposite side. And that really helps when I'm quilting a lot of those blocks in a row. So you can see in that cute little purple spot, just a little bit of continuous curve. And then in the aqua, I did some geometric dot to dot. So that part was pretty on plan. Um, I kind of got going with that and I thought, okay, this is pretty good, it's pretty good. Now let's look at the outside. So I decided that I was gonna cur quilt those curved pieces using a curved ruler, you know, from point to point. But instead of marking out all of those lines, I just really needed a registration point to use as a guide. So from each one of those blue points, I just marked a line or marked a dot about three inches above it. This is great, right? Because I don't have to mark out everything. And it's so frustrating when I do mark out the whole design and it doesn't land on it perfectly. Here, I can just go from point to point and get the same effect. So you can kind of see me plotting where that line is gonna go and then beginning my quilting. So I have my smiley ruler and I went from the point of one blue diamond shape up to that outer point and then on to the other side like that. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that arc that I quilted is not the same size as my ruler. I like to joke that you may have purchased the whole ruler, you just don't have to use the whole thing. In this example, I'm using just part of that curve to get the shape that I need. But what I'm doing is making sure I'm using the same part of the curve. So let me go back to the other side. I like to line it up. And then when I do the other side, reposition. And it's going to give me that nice, shorter shape. So this is exciting because if you're quilting and you don't have that right ruler size, you can either stretch it out or shrink it to make it work. So OK, so far, so good. I'm thinking, all right, this is OK. There's my finished arc. But almost immediately, I was like, ugh, I don't know it started looking like a flower. Like, I don't know, it just was bigger than I thought it would be. And I'm, I was thinking, oh, I don't know, it's not looking quite right. So 
one thing I like to do if I'm not sure or if I want to audition designs is I'll, I'll draw on a picture that I take from, with my phone. And I showed you some mock-ups from the last live chat, but we can see here my stellar drawing. <laughs> but I couldn't decide, should I just do more arc shapes that overlap or should I just echo the inside of them and go with that same plan I had decided? And really, it took me mm, a while to decide. I couldn't decide. Um, sometimes when I get stuck or I'm not sure what I'm going to do, I will do the walk by. Have you ever done that? Where you just walk by your quilting project and you give it the side eye, kind of glare at it, and you walk back in front of it. Then I went and got a drink, came back, and finally I'm like, okay, I've got to finish this. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, so I decided to do the overlap. Even though it wasn't that shape that I was thinking, it does give me smaller areas to work with, and I think it kind of fits the look of the mandala. When you're quilting and it doesn't go exactly how you plan and you have to choose between one or the other, sometimes I think we can get so focused on it that it's like, oh, one's right and one's wrong, and that's not the case. They're both probably great options. Sometimes you just have to pick one and go with it. Um, ultimately, I'm glad I, I did go with this. So once I have that, framework, you know, marking those dots, quilting those arcs. Now I have other little areas to fill in. This is one of my favorite ways to handle negative spaces or background areas, taking a bigger area and breaking it down into more manageable chunks. It just makes it a little bit easier. So now that I have my chunks, I need to decide what I'm going to quilt in them. And this part, like my little finger modeling there, I decided I was going to treat that whole piece as one or those two pieces as one whole area. So kind of to pull the quilting out from the block into the background. So that was one area I needed to pick a design for and then in this area. So those two I had to work with. With that curved pointy one, this is the one I went with. Now, if you are a machine quilter, you probably can look at this and think, oh my gosh, she did a start and stop and I sure did. That center design is not connected anywhere, so that means in every little spot, I'm starting a new line of quilting and quilting the design. I know before I get started, that's gonna take longer, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> I will say, if this was a quilt with a lot of those blocks, this is not how I would choose to do it. Um, and I'm obviously not gonna do this in every row, but adding a little bit of difficult stuff in some areas will look really nice. So for this, I called on my friend Smiley, that ruler to help me echo the sides and then filled it in with those pebbles. Again, pebbles take forever. They're very time consuming, but I can stand them in little bitty areas. So um, even though it takes a little bit longer, I knew going into it and I was okay with that. I did, opt, I did opt to use this light blue thread just to give it a little bit of contrast, but nothing too crazy. And I picked that because blue is one of my favorite colors. If you were making this quilt and you were like, oh, that that purple is my favorite color, then you could do a light purple. Um, use your own preferences to pick those things out. But there we can see kind of the progress picture and I'm super loving how it looks at this point. I'm not loving how long it takes, but I'm loving how it looks. That little bit of separation is what's gonna give it that mandala look. But I already said, I'm not gonna do um, this in all of the rows. I don't wanna do hard stuff everywhere. I'm gonna pick and choose. So now I have to decide what I'm gonna do in this next area. Now, one of the things that I love about the quilt top, and I'm biased because I made it, is I fussy cut out some of the shapes. And those outer shapes, I fussy cut out that little purple circle. So whatever design I put in that area, I didn't want to overlap that or take away from that. So it took me a bit to figure out what I was going to do. I kind of brainstormed, again, some more options <laughs> with my, my pen. Um, I thought I could do you know, plume feather or some echo lines. But in the end, I decided to go with that continuous curve. Again, because it's just nice and easy, and I can kind of wrap it around that center bit. So adding a couple arcs with Smiley, of course, just using part of it that go from one point to the next. And adding two, I'm, I'm not sure why I chose two. I think it just needed a little bit more. And then I traveled to the bottom and then quilted this continuous curved flower that kind of worked around that purple spot. So taking things into consideration. If that particular block was a solid piece of fabric or wasn't fussy cut, I would probably have quilted it slightly different, maybe with that plume feather. But again, since I wanted to keep it kind of separate, kind of dictated what I put in that area. So at this point, okay, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I like to say, I joke, but it's kind of true. The first third of the quilt can take about half of the time 
just because I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do, how it's going to flow. Um, sometimes I might avoid an area because I'm not sure what I'm going to do in it yet. So it's just kind of getting that, that routine down. But once I get to this point, I kind of have a plan and it's time to rock it and just go with it. So I'm working around the outside and then working down into the block. So within the piecing, again, um, like I said in my last live chat, that was the most important part to me. So picking designs that we're going to, you know, some dot to dot in there, just nothing too fussy, nothing too overly over the top, because I don't want to take away from that piecing and just love how that looks. Now, in the blue, again, let's talk about plans not working out. I think I'm going to do the same dot to dot quilting in the blue that I did in the purple. And you can see I had that little gap between the quilting and that point. Um, so that it touches one point, echoes the side, and comes back, which is great. I don't know, but for some reason I didn't love it. I thought I did a couple and I'm like, I don't know, it's just looking a little stubby. So in the third one, which you can see kind of towards the right there, I quilted the lines so that they go all the way to the outer point. I don't know, I just think it looks better. It, the shape fits a little bit better. And so I just, from that point, went ahead and did it that way. Now those two that I quilted the other way, it's just a good example of how, you know, if it's not working, switch it up. I'm not gonna go back and rip them out. They're gonna look a little different. Um, and hopefully nobody will notice except for you because, you know, I just told you I did that. Another part that kind of stumped me was that center star because it's really cool looking, but it was also fussy cut. And so it made kind of these rings around the outside or rings with the print. Um, if that had been a solid fabric, again, or nothing, something that wasn't fussy cut, I probably would have done more of a motif kind of idea there. But instead, I just quilted around that kind of detail and just used the, the fabric placement as my guide. This picture is kind of dark because it's really hard to see the quilting on that busier fabric. So that's a good thing. If you're working with fabrics that are really bright and busy and you can't see the quilting, use that kind of as motivation like, oh, it doesn't matter, it's gonna, I'm not going to see the quilting anyway. So um, again, that's kind of how I handle that area. So we can see a little bit more of the in progress working on the other side, adding those arcs, and then filling them in. Then I left for the very last the white parts of the quilt. So there was a ring of kind of diamond whites and two rings of white areas. They were so bright, so solid looking that I went ahead and switched thread colors for that, put in white thread and just quilted some wishbones. I had said in the last live chat that I would do some pebbles to add a pop of texture. But by this point, I knew that it was gonna be cutting it close I didn't think I could get the whole thing done, but I definitely wanted to get the center done. And I know that I can quilt wishbones quicker than pebbles. I still get a lovely texture and it still looks nice, um, but it's a little bit quicker. So that plays a big, big uh, role into the designs I pick, how much time I have and how long that design takes to quilt. Again, with the wishbone design, I can start in one corner and on the opposite side and it allows me to quilt it all continuously. And then in those longer spikier points, I did a swirl with a hook. That was another part I was like, oh, it's just so small. I didn't want to do more dot to dot. I didn't want to do more continuous curve. So I went ahead and opted for that. So I like how it extends out to the point and then really fills in that area. But I did that with white thread again, so it wouldn't contrast at all. And then here we can see the in progress finished center. So we have that center finished part and then the outer ring. And I think I have one more picture of it. So it's looking really good. Now I need to keep adding to that and building off it. And if you can see in the upper right corner, you can see what I think I'm gonna do in the next ring. So um, again, it just goes to show, you can make a plan and it might not turn out exactly how you like it to, and it's okay, right? When you're done, you have a finished quilt and that's the most important thing. When I do trunk shows or when I travel and teach, sometimes I'll talk about a, a dessert buffet you know, sometimes if you go to dessert buffet, you have to pick just one dessert and it's really hard to decide. But when you're done, you have dessert. And so that's always going to be a good thing. So um, again, it's, it's, it's easy to get kind of caught up in the details. But when you're done, you have a finished quilt and it's going to be great. So I don't know if that helps sing into my process or if, if it's obvious that I just really overthink things and uh, really dive into it a little too deep. Um, but it's just kind of fun to, to for me, it was kind of fun to kind of take pictures along and, and kind of, I don't know, think through what I was actually thinking. So, all right, we have any questions? I see some papers over there. Again, I'm gonna be back in next week's live chat. I'll be talking about the rest of the quilts. Um, we'll see how that finishes up and then answer any questions you have it. How do I figure out the tension on the quilt top for the long arm? 
Oh, thread tension. Isn't it fun? So great. Um, tension is one of those things that are really scary, but the more comfortable you get with quilting, the easier it gets. I will say on a long arm, the best thing you can do is get the bobbin tension set to an acceptable range and then adjust the top. So when I'm looking at my top and bottom thread, I'm never touching my bottom. I'm only adjusting my top. So that's how I get it set. Once you get to a good tension, if that scares you, like if you're long armor out there and you're scared to try it, just stick with the same weight of thread and you shouldn't have to adjust the tension very much. So for instance, when I started long arming, I really struggled with the tension part and I finally got so fine 50 weight to work. And I only used so fine for years and years and years um, just to take out the variables. But I will say that sometimes thread issues are called tension, right? The, the shredding, the breaking, the skipping stitches. That can be tension, but it could also be another issue. And that right there is where it gets frustrating. But that's kind of how I figure that out. Hopefully that helps. What is the stitch length? I struggle with deciding the stitch length for my quilts. So the stitch length is a, a length that you feel comfortable with, right? As long as it's holding the layers of the quilt together, it's totally a personal preference. Um, I don't use a stitch regulator, so I have more of an organic length stitch that gets closer together and further apart depending on the designs. Um, to kind of review the quilt I just showed, in the pebbles, my stitches were a lot smaller because I'm working in a lot smaller area. In the bigger arcs, my stitches are gonna be a little bit bigger. I'm okay with that. Now, I should say, don't do anything that I suggest and expect to win a ribbon at a quilt show. That's probably not gonna happen. Um, but for me, I'm fine with that. But if you're like, I need a rule, Angela, give me a rule to follow. Um, I usually tell new long armors, 10 to 12 stitches per inch is probably a good bet. You don't want it so small that it's really hard to take out should you need to take it out. But you don't want it so big that you know your foot gets stuck in the quilt when you pull it over you. So hopefully that helps. Oh, good, this question. I totally meant to talk about this. Um, with EPP, is it okay to stitch in the ditch since all the hand stitch seams are pressed open? And I totally meant to talk about that and I forgot. So thank you, whoever asked that. Okay, yes, with EPP, the way it's put together, your, your seams are pressed or kind of folded open. And I did stitch in all the seams. Now that means. I look at my seam, I'm gonna have just a line of stitches right there that if I go right into that, it's probably gonna just get the stitches. But listen, I'm not that good at stitching in the ditch. <laughs> it's not gonna hit that perfectly. Um, so I'm just getting it close. Now, I stitch in the ditch because I liked how it made all the individual sections stand out from each other. Um, it's definitely not required, but I don't think it's a problem. Now, if you were gonna try this and you were only gonna stitch in the ditch and you are such a great stitch in the ditcher that you will be perfectly on that, then I might say no. But since there's other quilting on here, I'm not always just stitching in the ditch perfectly, um, it's fine, so hopefully that helps. How do I decide the path I should quilt to minimize quilting over previous lines? That is the million dollar question, right? That's the goal. I wanna get in, quilt the block, and get out, and then try not to stitch over lines, previously quilted lines. Um, I will say I'm okay with doing that though, if I need to. I will stitch over a line twice. I think that's okay, but three times is too many. I don't know why, that's just my arbitrary rule. Um, there was one part of the quilt where I needed to go over a stitch line twice because it had little inset diamonds. Um, and so I, I was fine with that. But when I'm looking at the quilt, how do I decide? That was the question. Um, where am I starting? Where am I ending up? And do I have a design that can take me there? Right, so for the dot to dot design, right? I kind of did that kind of pointy thing. To, trans, to transition from block to block, I use a stitching in the ditch to do that. I know my finger's not really helping, but it makes me feel like I'm doing something. Um, so sometimes I'm looking at it like, okay, this is the design I'm gonna quilt, this is how I'm gonna transition. But we look, think about that continuous curve that starts from one end and ends on the other side um, that does it automatically. So I guess the short answer is knowing where you're starting, knowing where you're going, and then trying to pick a design that will help get you there. Does it always work out? No, I mean, it depends on the quilt. And sometimes I'll quilt a couple blocks, realize, oh, there's a different way I can go about quilting the same designs and not have to double travel. So, um, but don't worry too much if you have to, it totally is not the end of the world. Great questions, everybody. I really enjoy you watching. Um, I'll be here next Thursday at 3 p.m. Central, but if you can't watch it live, no problem. It always lives on my YouTube channel. And um, next week, 
next week we'll get to see what it looks like when it's all finished. I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Until then, everybody, happy, happy quilting.